Welcome to Buckman's Model Mania. Today we're going to find out exactly how long it's been since I've done a video because I just did about uh, three or four minutes worth of video on wrapped parts and then I looked over, was going to pause the camera and went, wait, I'm not recording. Great. So let me go back through. We're on the uh, stage 53 of the Moomin House. I already got the glove because I'm about to do some stain from Diagostini and what I had done was I opened the book and I talked about the parts so you can see here there's the bubble pack already open this is the floor from last time not gonna need it I did and I will do it again because the more I get it on and off of here the more likely it is going to actually come on and off without a lot of strain because it is a very tight fit. I may not even have to glue this and I actually mentioned that. You can see the detail lines here. <clears throat> the detail lines here are still there just not as apparent because I use stain versus well if I even if I would used paint I think they would have faded out like that. And this like I said this is a very tight tolerance. So let me go ahead and set this aside and you can see last time that's where I uh, tested the stain. And I did mention that on the last video, I apologize, audio was very, very low. I've double checked, triple checked, I've recorded some, made sure that my audio is correct now. I got a couple of videos that the audio is really bad, we're okay now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stain this, and I'm, that's why I, I went and got stuff set up. That's why I'm wearing a glove. I'm going to be staining this using the Barathane wood stain here. The other parts in this pack are the feet for the bookcase, which is sitting right here. There's the bookcase. And you can see the bookcase looks pretty good. I'm going to probably end up be repainting because it is a little it looks a little bit like dusty to me but got the bookcase and what I did talk about is you can see both sides of this are wood as are the uh, book bookcase top and this part was painted white this was always full wood. I'm not going to do anything with the feet because the feet are just too small to really mess with. And then the uh, back of the cabinet. You can see here, I did not sand that down. It actually takes a long time with these tiny parts to get this paint off. And this paint is almost like a Formica. You can see it's all chipped up. This will actually be up against a wall. If it's not, I'll sand it down later and I will... Um, I'll paint it then. I did try on some of these parts using my uh, hobby belt sander. No, let's see. No, I, I actually did a lot of uh, sanding to get it out because I ended up with some small grooves here. I need to get a little bench sander instead of the belt sander because the belt's only like this wide. So I end up, I end up leaving marks that I don't want in the wood. So let me go ahead and set these parts up here. And this time I don't have to pause the camera because I've already got everything ready. So we're going to put that on there, trying not to stain the bench too much, not trying to keep it a little bit pristine. It's far from pristine, but it's not in bad shape. And you can see right here some, uh, what was this? This was, no, it wasn't Instaset. I think it was to me extra thin I dumped here really not good for your uh, cutting mat and I've actually got a new cutting mat coming some people are going to hate it some people are going to be like yeah that's Buck because it's pink on one side which is not, is not the side I got it for it's purple on the other side matter of fact what it is is this purple. I like this mat. I used to, people have said uh, things about the fact that I used to keep this covered with um, wax paper. 
on, set on top of a mat which had wax paper on it and they would say so you've got protective stuff on the mat that you're using to protect the protected mat yes absolutely it's the way my wind works so let's press on with this matter of fact i've got double paper towel here let me go ahead and take one off because i'm going to use one to keep from getting the bench messed up and then the second one is going to be to wipe the stain down and so it's just you know use a sponge brush like this and just go back and forth preferably along the grain and i think this is along the grain i couldn't tell you for sure be a little bit careful when you get to the edge because this will flick little brown specks everywhere but then you know just get it on there and the longer you leave it on there the closer to this dark it's going to get once you've got it covered just take a paper towel rag something just wipe it down interesting you can see defects in the wood right there which i could be upset because that looks like it's a scratch mark actually it's not might be a crack but it gives it character it makes it look lived in so there's that let me go ahead and pause because i always save my brushes i i could let this sit here and dry out but it would be it would ruin it these things don't last very long anyway but i am nothing if not frugal so let me pause the camera and i will be right back okay i am back I haven't put the top back on here yet hang on just a second try not to get stain on myself and cover your ears for a second maybe my little toy hammer what's the sad part is I got this from Oakry about 10 12 years ago I've looked they don't sell this anymore I love this hammer Okay, so let's go ahead and move this up out of the way. And I do have to say, there is another person that I know that is building this, Howard, also known as Dash Riptide on Hobby Time Modelers. And I'd send you over to his channel, except he doesn't have one. He's talking about it, but he doesn't have one yet. So, get the wood glue open. And it has been a couple of weeks since I've been able to get any real bench time into the fiscal year, stressed out beyond belief. Fiscal year's over. I am so much better. <laughs> so here's the foot. And it says, points out in the directions to make sure you put the foot in a specific way. So you can see this. Let me see if I can. Okay, you see this round the uh, spot I want to say flattened spot here the pointy part down here this goes into the base kind of like this and it'll sit in there relatively well All right. what it's going to do is it's actually but when it hits the bottom there is going to actually stand it up straight and it, it's kind of funny because they tell you to paint it white and then paint it brown. The problem with painting it white and then painting it brown is that it's not going to come out brown. It's going to come out all streaky. Trust me, just painting the bare wood is better. So I'm going to put a drop of wood glue in each of these holes. I'm actually going to push this drop into the hole because it's not in there. And then I'm going to take the tweezers, grab each foot, and set it in there. Key thing is you want to get these in there to where they're going to be straight, not crooked, not laying over like this one is right now. And then you're going to let it dry 
and wood glue actually dries pretty pretty quick. It doesn't dry dry. It's not fully set up real quick, but it will set up enough to where it'll hold pretty quick. And there's that one. Last one right here. See, they're a little bit wonky right now. But they're small enough. Oh, look at that. Let me turn this one. Actually, I'm going to take this one out. I'm going to move this one over here. Hopefully it's still going to stay because once I get this one back in, I'll bring it up to the camera and show you what I saw. Okay, that one's cut in half right there. So I'm going to put it on this in this spot here because that way it's towards the back. It's not going to be noticeable. Go ahead and set this on the feet. Hopefully that will make them stick correctly. And then the next thing they tell you to do, like I said, is paint it. They want you to paint it white as a primer and then paint it black or not black, brown. Instead, I'm going to do the brown only. Let's see. Now, once you paint it, then they're going to tell you to assemble it. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, because Watching me paint is like watching paint dry. Not something I'm going to subject you to, not so that you have to skip it. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here, paint these parts, and then I'll come back after that painted and show you, show you the assembly of the bookcase. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I've painted these. They're mostly, mostly dry. And I'll show you. I actually found where I did the scarring of the wood with the uh, belt sander. And I'll show you, this is how the paint comes out on the back side. You can, I mean, you can keep putting layers on, but it doesn't look that good. That's why I'm sanding the paint off. So next thing, thing they say to do is to attach the rear panel. And it's gonna fit down into this groove here. And like I said, I'm gonna put that side to the back. I'm just gonna put a little bead of glue down the center and to the two sides. Doesn't have to be much. It will squeeze out, but it won't be that obvious because it's going to be at the back of the uh, shelving. But this is important. Make sure you put the right side in because otherwise you'll have the white side that looks like crap towards the front of the shelf. And this pushes in pretty firmly. Matter of fact, looks like might be a good idea to clamp it. Let's see. I've got the clamps on another bench over here. Let me grab enough to actually get this in place. Okay. And I'm making sure to clamp it on a spot on a shelf. I don't, I don't want to have it popping off after it dries. And by the way, I, I meant to unpause the camera. Instead, I stopped it. So this will be a. You won't notice it, but I have to um, stitch this together with the other video. So 
let's move that clamp there a little. No, I need this one up here. Matter of fact, we'll do that one like that. We're going to do that one like that. And then we're going to put another clamp on here because this part right here is popping up. Hang on. I think I see what's going on. We'll put that there. Yeah, what was happening was I was in the middle, not on a shelf. And it was bending the uh, end up. Let's go ahead and put a small clamp on here. So let me pause the camera, let this set up, and I'll be right back. Okay, it's been about five to ten minutes. This should be set enough to where the parts will stay in place. And it is. Uh, maybe a little bit back here. I'll reclamp it once I have the rest of the parts on. <coughs> okay. So after you put the back on, the next thing it tells you to do is put the bottom on. Something like this. And I'm going to line up the back and center it on the between the uh, center it on the bottom here. Oh, actually, they tell you to put the bookcase top on first. Line with the back wall. So the flat side will go to the back like this. Curved side to the front. You're going to center it on there. At the same time, you're going to center it on the uh, on the top of the bookcase, left and right. But front to back, you're going to make this flat part flush with the back of the cabinet, kind of like that. Slide this over. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it flush with the back panel, not so much the sides. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So there, you can see how the back is sticking out just a little bit. I've made it flush with the back, centered pretty much like that. <clears throat> Let's turn the page, flip a styrene tube across the room and where oh it did say to put the uh, feet on skipped right over that put the feet on here like that making sure that I put this one in the front and you can see like I said the glue or the tape clip tape the paint doesn't adhere very well to that white paint let's move this up center it on here center it on the center of the bookcase on here make sure that the back is flush and this is small enough the scale is small enough it's not going to be extremely obvious if it's not right. But, I, you know, it's not going to be micrometer precision. But I want to make sure that it is as close to perfect as possible. Then the next thing to do is put this piece on here. That's just going to be a matter of Putting it in here. I'm not going to glue the top and the bottom. Just put glue on those three pillars. Slide it in here. Should fit perfect. Actually, I think it's done. I think it's perfect. Make sure this slid a little bit. And the best way to make sure that the back 
that everything is straight is to actually push it down like that. I can see that it's got a little bit of a rock. I'm not going to be able to do anything about that. I think that's actually prior to the backing going on. But that should be good. And so we've got one more floor stained. We've got that bookcase built. And that, my friends, is all there is to do in stage 53. So I um, hope you're enjoying this. I am. It, between this and the Disney house, Disney house goes together a lot quicker, a lot easier. The movement house takes a lot more effort and work. Both of them are very awesome builds. Just the Disney house you can't get in the States right now. Go, go ahead and set that up. Oh, and I wanted to show that to you. This here shows exactly how much the paint, white paint, does not let the black brown paint adhere. That there was a little bit of white paint still there, and it will not. It didn't take the brown paint. I may do a little bit. Matter of fact, I I am going to do a little bit more paint on the back here. Probably will not thin it down, but. It is what it is. It's also this is also going to be against a wall. So, like I said, that's all there is to do in this issue. Thanks for stopping by, watching what I'm doing. Man, I just looked at that in the uh, on the screen. It looks awesome, actually. Um, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified of any time I post new content. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Have a great day. Have a great day tomorrow, and I will see you in the next video.